Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Lounging with Leone. I am your host, Leone, and today's topic of conversation is personal training, self-defense, fitness, all those healthy things. And joining me on the lounge is my boxing slash kickboxing trainer slash the guy who tortures me. <laughs> Welcoming David Flam. Thank you for having me. No. I don't torture. No, you don't torture me, but you make me suffer. I didn't. Quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, so tell me about yourself. What do you do, David? Uh, so I'm actually, I'm only 21, so I'm a personal trainer. Uh, I still study at uni. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much my <laughs> life. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Studying and tra- training. Yeah, that's, studying and training pretty, pretty much. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm jealous. What are you studying? So I currently finished my commerce degree. Uh-huh. And I'm looking into doing more physio. I see. Yeah. You just don't like commerce? Nah, commerce, none of that. Do you feel that. like it's been a waste or is it more like um, a... I mean, I could use it in future if yeah. I do go into physio mm. and like my own business and all that. True. Yeah. Everything you learn in life is Goes applicable. To, yeah. You learn from your mistakes. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that yet. <laughs> you what? can teach me about that. Oh, <laughs> I have so many mistakes. <laughs> Um, okay. And so now you are a personal trainer. Yeah. What made you go into personal training? Uh, I guess, uh, personally I started with Taekwondo. So, mm. and then from there, I was still young. So probably it was about, I'd say 13 years old. Wow. And I, I helped out with like classes and all that. Yeah. Cause I, I did it for quite a while so at that age. Yeah. So I was like, oh, that's, I love the sport. Like it's just martial arts in general. Taekwondo. The, Taekwondo. Yeah. I love the sport. So I was like, oh, it would be nice to share my love for the sport with other people. I see. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Taking your passion, making it a job. Mm. Love it. What is Taekwondo? I have no idea. Uh, Taekwondo is pretty much, um, comes from Korea, South Korea. That's, oh, that's yeah. the first one. South Korea, <laughs> our favorite country. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. So um, it's more kick focused and it's very technical. It's not like all powerful, like what we do in boxing. Mm-hmm. It's more like more light kicking. Okay. It's like f- light footwork. Ooh. Yeah, and it's like a little bit self-defense as with it, yeah. Mm. So what are the different types of martial arts? Oh, there's there's many. <laughs> Is there? There's, uh, there's a lot. <laughs> I'll name the main ones though. So obviously we have boxing, the ones yes. that me and you do, <laughs> which is just all hands. Yeah. Uh, there's kickboxing. So same as boxing, but you're going to add kicks in Mm -hmm. and then from there you have Muay Thai Mm -hmm. which includes the two I just said but with elbows and knees and grappling as well oh yeah so you can grab one do your knees clinch elbows yeah all those ones but then you have other ones like for example wrestling Mm -hmm. like what we see in like movies and that where they have the singlet (laughs) and all that and then they wrestle yeah so that's another one or you have one that's similar to that which is called Brazilian Jiu Jitsu I know that one yeah, so same uniform, but mm-hmm. instead of the singlet, it's literally, what is it? Like, what is it called? Like a, a gi? Gi, yeah, that's yeah. the one. That's the word. I <laughs> they have, have that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that, that's like wrestling as well, but including the submissions mm. and like more grappling. And then one more, I would say MMA, mm-hmm. which is a mix of all of them combined into one. Right. That's so that's what like you your s- UFC, yeah. 1FC, yeah. all those organizations so what is the appeal of like fighting people <laughs> I, I don't know I, I don't, that's a good question because like i i'm surrounded by people who love watching ufc and i'm just like but why do you want to watch people like, like punch each other <laughs> that's, i mean personally for me because i've done the sport mm-hmm. you get to see people who are like high level do it like in a way that i wouldn't even dream of doing yeah so like for example um I'd say the most basic one everyone knows, Conor McGregor. Mm-hmm. He's so precise with all his like punches and everything. And you look at it, you're like, oh, it makes it look too easy. And then you go and then you do it and you're like, oh, <laughs> what am I doing? Yes. <laughs> yeah, so like, it's like specific details that you get to see. Right, right. But like outside people, people just like knockouts, honestly. I mean, I don't, but anyway. Or like, what well, other people who love the story. <laughs> they, they see a knockout, they're like, oh. Yeah. Well, I think it's a very primal instinct yeah kind of human yes is it just men though <laughs> no oh yeah you know what for people like that train at my other gym mm. um like 
the females there, they also love the sport. Okay. But I don't know. I don't know if it's because they do the sport and they understand why the sport's so good. Yeah. Or because, yeah, outside, I don't know. I don't know many people that would watch it. I mean, I have a friend who, like, you look at her and she, you're like, yeah, she's, she looks like a princess. She loves makeup and everything. But then she's, like, fully down into, like, the UFC stuff. I'm like, why? I don't understand. Have you watched? I tried, and then I'm always like, oh. <laughs> Can I ask which one you've watched or specifically? I Did don't you know? know. Like, Big Brother will put something on, and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like it's a good good thing to watch, honestly. Okay. I get so entertained watching it. You do? Yeah. You like getting, like, seeing people bleed? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you love, like, training people to watch no, them stuff. No, I think it's more of, like, um, the <laughs> ultimate chess game. Yeah. I, that, that's another reason, like, because I do the sport, I understand, for example, in the UFC, they don't do much to each other mm. and people boo, like, the crap out of them. Right. But, like, if, to me, that's like, it's like a chess game between them. Right. It's like, whoever k- goes first, they might be the ones getting knocked out. It's mm. hard. So it's, it's like, like yeah, strategy. Strategy. A lot of strategy. Patience? Patience. Yeah. Right. So I'm just, like, sitting there, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> obviously when we train, none of that. No, you just kind of you're just in the bag. Oh my god! Yeah, you see me sometimes. I'm just like, uh, Leonie's <laughs> standing in the corner, and I'm like, Leonie, what are you doing? Oh, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm like, Leonie, come on. <laughs> I'm sorry. So you started with taekwondo. Was yeah. that like something your parents kind of put you in, or? So luckily enough, I had a taekwondo place across the street from me. Uh-huh. I think we drove. We just drove past. I was still about grade three mm-hmm. at the time, so I was like. Clueless, I had nothing. Yeah. Like, yeah, I had no sport in me except for, like, soccer at school. So, yeah, and then my parents drove past one day. They're like, oh, David, I want to try out a sport like Taekwondo. And I was like, mm, sure. I'm still introverted right now. Yeah. But, like, back then, even more. Yeah. I was shy. I didn't want to do anything. I no interaction that. with people. Mm-hmm. Scared of judgment. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. It was funny because the first day I went in, it was actually an adults class. Uh-oh. And I was like, oh, my God, these guys are, like, Scary, yeah. scary people. Yeah. I, ain't, I don't want to be here. Yeah. Everyone was so tall and big. I'm like, oh my God. They want to judge the crap out of me. Yeah. <laughs> but no. did they? They didn't judge no. the crap out of me. I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. Honestly, I don't remember. Yeah. But that was really nice, honestly. Yeah. And yeah. so you got into Taekwondo. You loved it. You kept doing it. Yeah. So I did that for seven to eight years until HSC time. I see. And that's when I, my parents were like, no more sport for you. Aww. Study, study, study. I think that was a good, like, good for me, honestly. It, g- it gave me a break to, like, reach out to other sports. Right. Yeah. Instead of focusing on just Focus on just, yeah, because I was already eight years. Yeah. I went to First Stand, which is the first one of the black belt. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, all I'm doing is comps, but, like, the comps were weird. Yeah. Because there's one that you have specific, like, the, I think it's the way South Korea does it, which is chest guard, everything, you do your weight, your age, your size. Mm-hmm. And then there was another one, which was horrible, which is the one I did, where you only fight your age group. Mm-hmm. And like I said, because I'm a small Asian boy, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> people were like double my size. And every comp I would go in, I would fight and then come out with tears everywhere. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How do you, like tears as in like you were emotionally like Like broken. in pain. <laughs> in pain? Yeah. How do you like overcome that? Honestly... At the time, I couldn't. I thought to myself, the only way I could overcome it was by doing it more, right. which was not the greatest idea. Really? Because I, I went into it, and every time it was the same outcome. Right. Pain, cry, yeah. go on. Yeah. Because you, <laughs> you, yeah, you really can't do much in Taekwondo. So all you can do is kick, and it's only body kicks. Yeah. So imagine me, a little guy, <laughs> going up the double. So every time my legs would go up, and then everything's tired, and then the guy would just go one kick, and I'm like, oh, my oh, God. Oh, okay, that sounds really painful. <laughs> I don't blame you. So what other, I guess, martial arts did you So I ended up to? doing first year at uni, 2019. Mm. I got into Muay Thai. Mm. So that included more punches. Right. And I was like, damn it. I should have done this earlier because yeah. <laughs> it was like more boxing, there's yeah. low kicks, high kicks. It's a lot more technical right. than I thought it would be. Mm, mm. Okay, Muay Thai. Yeah, Muay Thai or so, kickboxing. Yeah. I guess it's about finding finding the, the right one the right one for you mm. and so you don't end up just crying. Crying in there. <laughs> like how I, I am. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, I don't cry. Wink, wink. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> um, and so how did you get into actually... I guess, going from doing it yourself to start training people. 
Yeah, so like I said, um, at that young age, helping out like with other instructors at my Taekwondo place. When I train at Muay Thai, people always ask, they're like, oh, how do I do this? How do I do that? And I'm like, oh, and then I help them out. And it's just like the joy of seeing people underst like understanding at our gym. The trainers, like some of them care and some of them don't. Right. So you can, you see the difference and yeah. you just know. If it hurts me to see people not do things right, I'm one of those I watch and I'm like, oh, please. Yeah. No, but it's true. Like even in school, if you do, if you have a shit teacher, you know, yeah. like, they're not going to learn anything and it makes the experience so much worse. But yeah, if you exactly. have a good teacher, it's like, oh, you oh, want yeah. to improve, you want to get better. But that's why I also like, with the sport of combat, um, the community, I love mm -hmm. the community in really? combat sports. Like they seem like they're independent, but they're always willing to help you. Mm -hmm. No matter where you go, the community, like your gym, it's like, I love the community. Yeah. Which gym yeah. do you go to? So, uh, for kickboxing? Yeah. Full Force, Blacktown. That's the one near my rock climbing gym. Oh, is it? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I think. Where you, rock climbing? Oh, we're, we're under, underneath you, right? Yes. So where the Indian restaurant is? Yes. Yeah, yeah, mm. we're directly underneath. <laughs> um, okay, so show us a martial arts move. Oh, I'm showing you a yeah. move? Oh, that um, everyone should at least know. Okay. Self defense. Self defense yeah. wise. Yeah. Actually, that's, I, a, that's a good conversation to lead into, which is about self defense. Did you do yeah. martial art as part of the self defense consideration? Or? So, I feel like I didn't do it for specifically self defense, but it worked out in a way that I could use it if I have to. Mm. <clears throat> I'm not one to use like my skills to hurt someone else. Yeah. So like, if someone comes to me and like threatens me. Or like does something. I'm I never strike first. Right. So if someone does it to me, I'm I'm obviously gonna do it back to them. Right. I isn't there I think it was I don't know which which one, but it's like part of martial arts is like also knowing when to walk away. Yeah. Or so something. Number one rule is always run away. Okay. <laughs> don't don't stand and try to fight someone. Right. Especially in a situation where they have like a weapon. Only use self defense if they've got you cornered and mm. yeah, you can't go somewhere else okay. that's what my rule of thumb is or i found that somewhere yeah <laughs> i don't know where i got that from i honestly forgot. i feel like it's just a thing just a thing I mean, never never engage yeah. honestly i think it's because when you're trained uh, in martial arts you know what are the repercussion of yeah. the reality it's a bit like um p players getting their first car and go nuts because they have no understanding of what to control and like yep. racing drivers or people who are professional uh tend to be more you know, reserved because reserve mm. they know what the limit it is. Especially when you're not in a competition scene, you don't know what's going to happen. You know, yep. there could be a guy behind you or, a, you know, like, like you say, a, a weapon. You yeah. could add on that you don't know the person as well. You don't know if they have a skill set of their, their own. Yeah, so like... You don't know how strong they you are. You don't know how strong they are. Well, I guess it's also like, what if you're one of those macho people or like very, like, you know, emotionally driven... And then your first reaction is to kind of like engage in the fight. You say that, but like, I, I think people, they always just go for what they see as weak. Right. Like if they, if they want to hurt someone, they'll always look for like what they think is a weak target. Mm. But they, they don't think about like what the other person has mm. on them. So, Well, teach me something. Teach you something? All right. <sighs> <laughs> I don't, okay. I don't All right. know. How, how am I going to do this? I don't um, know. So I, I was thinking about this. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm not going to teach you like the basics that we always do like in boxing, like jab cross and all that. Uh -huh. So I have three. Okay. <laughs> all right. First one's the obvious one, uh -huh. right? If you're up against like a male. Uh -huh. Run away, run away. Run. Yeah, you can obviously <laughs> run away first. Yeah. But number two, go for their... They're nuts. They're nuts. Okay. Like literally. All the time? All the time. Okay. It's a weak spot. Okay. Also, I would say never swing. Like, for example, it's like a swing punch. Right. Because they always see it coming. Okay. Like, even a slap, you can see the arm coming from a mile away. Right. And then it'll be too slow. By the time that they see it, they'll probably grab you. Mm. And it'll be too long. Number one would be kick to the, to the nuts. Mm -hmm. Number two would be a throat strike. So, <laughs> so you want your hands like that, right? Yeah. And then the aim is to get... Like, if it's a male, the Adam's apple, okay. around that area, yeah. you want this part to, and you want to just strike straight Ow. ahead. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it will hurt. Honestly, I would assume that most people would think that a person would swing. Mm, that's true. I feel like that is the first reaction. Like, it's a reaction. Do. It's like a natural reaction. 
hide and swing. Yeah. But like in reality, you can always just go straight ahead, straight up. Yeah. Or like even you can even like hold on to them like hands, one hand back of the head, the other one on top. Pull them in and do a knee. Oh. But like a knee that one's risky. That one's risky because you don't know how strong they are. Okay. Because they can resist. Yeah. And you can <laughs> miss wildly and it'll right. still be pretty bad. But there's also like cheap shots. I, I shouldn't be saying this, but <laughs> cheap shots are like for self-defense reasons. I would go for them. Step on the knee mm-hmm. while that's straight. So like literally Owies. break their knee. Okay. That one's a really dodgy one, but... It works. Yeah. Like whatever gets you out of the situation to stay safe. Yeah. Just do it, honestly. Yeah. For all the girls listening there, knee their <laughs> balls. I mean, hit their balls. And I never hit a woman. <laughs> <laughs> if you're male, don't hit a woman. <laughs> yeah, do you think, okay, this is going into like dangerous territory. Yeah, yeah. But like there's a lot of men who are like victims of domestic violence yeah. from women. Like mm. what do you do as a, a man? That's Yeah, it's an interesting topic, that one. Because honestly. it's like. As soon as you the male strikes back, I feel like the male's. Or Always everything will go to the mail. Yeah. All the blame will go into the mail. Yeah. I, I guess, I don't, hmm. <laughs> I don't know, I haven't deep? been, yeah. <laughs> it's an interesting topic I haven't thought about, honestly. Yeah. And if, uh, oh, I don't know why I'm asking you. I was going to be like, oh, in, in that situation, what would you do? But it's hard. <laughs> if you were a male, what would you do? I mean, like, because we always teach women to defend themselves, right? Mm. And I think there is probably like, what's the word? discrimination like a gender discrimination there but obviously men are more strong like stronger yeah i guess than mm. than women i think it's unlikely the men will get damage from a f- woman you know from a physical c- perspective but i think it's more to do with um emotional and control yeah. power than it is so for a man to be abused by a woman physically it's more the psychological weakness you know what i mean yeah it's almost like um, the it, it's a submissive, you know, attitude, rather than a physical abusive attitude. Well, like a submissive attitude for the for the man. Yeah. So if you look at it the relationship perspective, right? What would cause a female to physically abuse her partner, right? Mm. Versus a male abusing his partner. Right, mm. so so the male perspective will be usually they have anger issues, testosterone, you know, a lot of um, huge egos and their pride, and they they take it out physically. That's how we men express ourselves, right? Where a woman um, usually it's it's more of a psychological um, abuse, and if if the guy is more of a beater, <laughs> right, he's most likely gonna accept those punches and kicks. I mean, they they're not gonna you know, knock him out, but um, it's just another form that translate from um, psychological to physical abuse. Sure. I look, I'm not an expert, but that's that's what I would re- reflective to. I think it's true because if I think about a very uh, prime example that's been very much in the news this year was like you know Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. Oh, I love yeah. Amber Heard. <laughs> 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 I think a lot of the abuse that she had on Johnny Depp was psychological. Yeah. So that couples in with physical abuse. Yeah, and because she like could psychologically kind of abuse him, the physical part is like I feel like comes naturally. I guess with mm. that. I guess, yeah. That's yeah. It. The moral of the story. That, that's a really good um, juxtaposing point. Yeah. I mean, I think the moral of the story is just don't hurt people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Learn to In run away. Way. Yeah, no, no matter what way. But unfortunately, there are like dickheads out there. So it's always good to like, you know, know how to. Yeah. <laughs> The only would demonstrate, I'll sit here. Yeah. I'll be out for the rest of the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's no, yeah, inter- yeah. an interesting conversation mm. because, yeah, obviously men can be victims of domestic violence. Yeah. Well. So do you still do Taekwondo? No, I just do Muay Thai now, Muay Thai kickboxing. But I feel like all my skill sets from Taekwondo transferred to kickboxing and Muay Thai and it still helps out more than doing Muay Thai by itself. Mm. I think it's just early age, um, able to, you know, really be connected with your physical form. It's a bit yeah. like, because me and Leonie, well, she do, does more rock climbing now. Yeah. It's, it's the same sort of understanding where your body movement is. Yeah. Mm. And then it can help translate to different type of genre as well. Yeah. That's yeah. true. Okay. So like rock climbing was pretty much the first sport that I did for like properly, like 
seriously and that was only like two three years ago i never did any sports yeah. in like when i was growing up and i kind of regret it because it's like oh my god my body's so old now no, <laughs> i can't <laughs> move properly <laughs> you can see me at boxing I'm like oh everything's <laughs> so tiring but yeah i think a lot of these things kind of like teach you more about like body awareness mm. which i have absolutely no awareness of prior. See, the challenge of martial art is not only you have to know your body awareness, but you get you need to know your opponent's body yep. awareness as too. Exactly. Which mm. is quite 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 a challenging feat. Mm. How do you do that? You just observe them. Well, See, I, that's why a patience is a good thing. Mm. It just takes time. Right. Yeah. So like if you rush into something, you never know the outcome. Right. Could either go your way or their way. Mm. It's a good so it's like a good mind you. mindset. Yeah. Yeah, it's all about the mind. The mind. <laughs> yeah, see, at least with rock climbing, it's you versus <coughs> that rock, mm. you know, where in martial arts, it's you versus another body. <laughs> and, and not only just another body, like everybody has different movement and timing and rhythm. So it makes it extremely challenging. That's why I think I enjoy watching it because it's like the the highest risk level of extreme sport, but that still require extreme talent and skills. People. I just have a great idea. Lenny, What's the idea? Why don't you have a segment where you would train a day with David at full force, and then after that, he'll come and do rock climbing. So you do like a video s- swap. <laughs> you know what? I want to try rock climbing. Okay. I think you'll love it. Do you want to do that? Do you spend a day with David? <laughs> he like trains me. You can teach me things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot of um, fighters actually enjoy rock climbing, like especially mm. grapplers, because there's a lot of grip oh, yeah. tension. Right, and and not only that, body awareness, positioning of body awareness is such a crucial thing. And because I used to do multi as well, yeah. Now, so I could really s- understand um, anything to do with functional body movement. Mm. It's it's so important. That's why I picked up rock climbing because I originally when COVID just be around the COVID time, I was thinking, oh, maybe I should go back to kickboxing. But I'm like, I I, I don't want to die. <laughs> Try it again. Seriously, like it's, no, it's, it's it's full on. So I thought, oh, rock climbing, and I watch um a a, a movie on um free soloing. I don't know if you know what that is, David. No, free soloing is when you climb up a mountain without any ropes. Oh my god! Yeah, so, I, so I, I, after watching that, I was like, oh, I'm really interested about this rock climbing world, <laughs> and then that's when I reach out to my sister and say, hey, let's go into rock climbing, and then now she's obsessed. Yeah, so how do you how did you get into it though? Like, do you like just go with um, Big Brother and all that, and then you just... Yeah, pretty much. I went with Big Brother, and then I did, like, one or two climbs, and I was like, holy shit, I am so unfit. And this was, like, at my heaviest weight mm. as well, and I'd, I'd never done any, like, physical activity before that. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm so unfit, but this is actually kind of fun. I wish I could keep doing it, but I'm, like, literally dying. And then so I kind of just was like, this is my sport. I'm going to keep doing it. I want to get better at it. And yeah, because so. what I like about it is you can do it at your own pace. When I first climb, mm. like after five climbs, I'm my, I'm dead. My arm is burnt. I've got nothing. And then I realize it's it's not necessarily just upper body strength. Like it's it's all about body positioning and movement and mm. balance. So like that's martial art too, right? Especially yeah. when I learn how to do a spinning back kick, you got to have a perfect form and balance. Yeah. You know? So it's the same thing. But in, in this instance, I'm not going to be pressured to, to do a 10-minute set <laughs> without dying yeah yeah but eventually it, you get good at it that you can climb for long long hours and then you don't realize that you're actually working out because you're yeah. just you're just trying to finish that route yeah mm. and and that's where we had you know me and the only enjoyed it yeah tremendously. Oh. so you have like different routes and different grading levels yeah and i guess it's like the f- the joy is trying to get to the top of the route yeah. and then kind of like level up almost if that makes sense <laughs> yeah 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 so that's the personal like goal it's like oh it's it doesn't feel like working out. You're just trying to like figure out mm. the strategic way to get to the top. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Which was what I enjoyed as opposed to like going to the gym and just like lifting. Weights. Yeah. See, I, I'm like that as well. I can't just go yeah. to the gym, go weight lifting. Oh I, I don't find that entertaining at all. Yeah. So prior to like my, when I was like my heaviest, I had a gym membership at like Virgin Active and I had a personal trainer mm. and I actually gained weight while I was. Muscle at weight that or? Gym. No, just like. Fat way. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. And I just, I think I just did not feel motivated to, mm. to go either. Did they like focus on your food as well? Or was it just... Yeah, no. It was just... Just 
pure just wait. Yeah. And they never much. asked about food or anything. I mean, they did, but then they didn't really like put any plan into action for me. See, I feel so like that's another thing that nutrition, that's the problem. Food. Nutrition's always one of those things that you need. Yeah. It's not all about the weightlifting and cardio. Yeah. No matter how much you do, it all comes down to how much you eat. Well, that's the thing. Food is so good. Food is too good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to enjoy it while I'm still young. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Because I, I definitely reached, like, my peak. And I was like, oh, okay. If, Everything I'm eating is just going everywhere. <laughs> if you would advise parents with kids and stuff, what would you recommend from a martial arts step up perspective? So, I actually think Taekwondo is a really good mm. because it's very disciplined. It's not all about like going wild and like attacking. It's more calm. You learn about discipline, respect. Mm. I feel like kids really need that these days. I feel like that's where I got my discipline and respect from, mm -hmm. from Taekwondo. So like if you're rude or like an asshole to anyone, mm. they will punish you. Like they'll yeah. literally go, go over in the corner, do 10 push-ups, and then you come back, you're like, you're late, go do push-ups. Wow. You get punished for little things. Yeah. Like uniform's not right punished but like it's very it's very i know it's like it sounds funny but it's, it, it helps a lot mm. sounds like an authoritarian regime yeah 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 it does hey well, that's thinking the... about it now yeah i was like oh damn well that was strict but like i guess it helps it I think helps it a lot does. it helps you to build like a routine yeah and, like make sure that you are disciplined which i definitely lack but like <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, I've I learned I think over the years to be more disciplined mm. and to like be consistent with things. Yeah, but yeah, no. As yeah. a kid, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> no but I was, yeah, I was a very obedient child. Oh. I feel yeah, I feel it, everyone. Oh yeah. I was like, oh god, if I do something wrong, I am going to get punished really oh, badly. No. <laughs> Is that most Asian kids? I I think so. I think it's just an Asian thing, honestly. Probably. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of Asian introverts. <laughs> Actually. You know what? Yeah. I feel like that's true. Yeah. This is a cultural thing. This is a cultural thing. Yeah. We're just all messed up. <laughs> yeah, scared of all the <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, God. It's like, How do you... That's why he's learning Taekwondo. Yeah. I don't think that was the reason. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish it was the reason. <laughs> yeah. What what other martial art were you thinking of dabbling in? Uh so I always wanted to do BJJ or wrestling as well. I, mm. I did a bit of BJJ back oh, in really? the day. Yeah. I did like five or six classes. I had my gi and everything. How was that? Uh, I wanted to die after every Yeah, it seems like it. <laughs> and that was like only, the only girl there as yeah, well. Yeah, it's very, yeah, it's very male dominant. It is. So I was like, oh, this is a bit awkward. <laughs> you got to the guy, they're like, oh, I'm position. so sorry. I don't want to hold this. I was, I was like, we kind of have to, eh? Yeah. <laughs> um, why I chose boxing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, why did you choose boxing? <laughs> Out of no, no, all the disciplines that why, you Why done. did you... Quit BJJ and I mean, why did you oh. stop BJJ? Yeah. Um, okay, I think it was so it was in between um, two relationships that I had. So it was after I broke up with, well, I didn't break up, it, was, it just ended badly <laughs> <laughs> with uh, an ex boyfriend. And I think Big Brother was like, oh, you should try BJJ to like, I don't know. And then I had like another friend that was like, oh, you should, you know, get your life back together and do some BJJ. And I was like, okay, fine, I'll do it. <laughs> and so I did it. And I think it was like at a point where I was like, I don't know what I'm doing with myself. I don't know what to do with life. I need to try something new. So I did BJJ. And then the reason why I stopped was because I started seeing somebody else. Yeah. And he was, he didn't like me doing BJJ. What was that though? He didn't like the fact that I was doing it with guys. Oh, uh. Jealousy, I guess. That's the wrong guy then. Yeah, that's oh, yeah, a, yeah he that was is the wrong, wrong guy. guy. <laughs> that, that, that relationship lasted three years. And I think it's also timing, years. right? Yeah, timing. Um, I think I was also quite depressed in my life at that time. It's like going to therapy and then also like also found like a new job and everything was just happening. So it was just like, ah. Mm. But I really enjoyed it. Would I do it again? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it's good because, yeah, like I had no experience in like this whole physical world of like using your body mm. or everything like i was really just like a potato on a couch <laughs> no it's right but and then now i realize like oh it's actually really good to like move your body <laughs> <laughs> but i feel like a lot of people have that problem it's not only you what just being a p potato mm. but like you're not a potato anymore oh i try not to be <laughs> <laughs> well, what's wrong with the potatoes they're good <laughs> potatoes are delicious they're, they're nice <laughs> 
It's full of carbs. Um, but why I got into boxing? Well, I have this thing called Class Pass on my phone. Oh, the thing that it's you an, use to try out gym. To, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like looking at like different classes that I could join to try out because I think it was last year I had like a goal to like lose 10 kilos um, and just get fit and get abs and whatever. So I was looking for different ways to do that without actually having to like, you know, go to the gym and like lift weights lift. and things. Like I want to do something that I feel like I could learn a skill from, mm. I guess. And then I saw boxing and I was like, oh, I'll give boxing a go. <laughs> and then here we are. <laughs> here we are. <laughs> but I really enjoy it because like one thing I really hate is doing cardio. Like I hate running and I hate, I don't know, it's just... Sorry me. for making you run. That's fine. <laughs> That's why I'm always like, oh, I gotta run and like, do oh, lunges. Let's do some frog jumps. And she's like, oh, damn it. Oh, yeah, I fucking hate. And then you go in the, you hide in your little corner for like ten seconds, and then I look at you and you're like, oh, I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm about to go now. Yeah, I, I genuinely hate cardio, <laughs> but I feel like boxing kind of like it offsets th- it offsets that do a you, little bit. Do you train um, kickboxing too or just the boxing? So uh, yeah I do both. So I've tried to get more kickboxing into our gym. Where... I realize that I'm really bad at kicking though. You're not that bad. My left kicks are like weak as. But you're right handed anyway so right? Yeah. So it's it's normal. Is it normal? Mm. Or my left my I've, left I've, leg? I've got um <laughs> bags here if you want to. <laughs> we're going to we're going to kick right we're gonna... now. <laughs> we're going to record our <laughs> For the podcast, <laughs> we're gonna go. To a quick break. Leonie's gonna <laughs> kick the bags. Well, maybe we can film something quickly after and I'll insert it. <laughs> Actually, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. we'll do that. Okay. We'll do that. Cut to David teaching me how to kick. <laughs> Hi everyone. Today I'm gonna be training my trainer, David. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. All right, all right. Cross or cross. Upper cross. Cross upper upper over. <laughs> it's definitely harder being a trainer. <laughs> I have no idea what the heck I'm doing. My arms are just like. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready. Up upper cross. Upper cross. Upper cross. Upper cross. Upper cross. Double jab cross. Cross or cross. Cross. Upper cross. Cross. Double cross. Cross. Double upper. Cross or cross. Stop the jab cross. You're gonna tell me when to stop the jab cross. Okay, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what is your advice for people who want to kind of get started into this fitness or weight loss journey, health journey? Honestly, go for it. No matter how bad it is, it's gonna feel like shit. Yeah. No matter where you go. <laughs> It's going to feel like the absolute worst thing you do in the world. Yeah. But it's all about consistency and putting in the right mindset yeah. for it. Yeah. That's why I wanted to ask you about how you motivate yourself to go. <laughs> um, I think it is discipline mm. because you you see me. I, sh- I, go, I show up sometimes and I'm just like, ugh. You're like, oh, why am I here? But like I showed up, right? Yeah. And there's been plenty of times that I'm like, oh, I could just not go. Do you, you guys know? get to spa? Uh, not at that gym. It really depends on where you go, mm. especially for sparring because it's a mix. You can either get someone that's a freaking asshole mm-hmm. who doesn't give a shit about you or you get the one that's more experienced and they give you advice. Right. They don't go too hard on you. So it's that's really, what I need. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When I spar at full force, I always pick and choose. If I don't know the person, because it's always two rounds per person. Mm. So the first round, I always feel them out. I see how they are. Mm-hmm. And I don't really go too hard. Mm-hmm. But if they're going hard on me, that's a different story. Because I'm will i a, I'm a mirror, okay, pretty much. Okay. Whatever you give to me, I'll give back to you. Interesting. Yeah. But like other people, they don't care. Yeah. They just It's like an ego thing sometimes at mm. those gyms. How do you check your ego? <laughs> go with someone better. <laughs> oh, really? Mm. Some people have such a big ego. Mm. And then if they go with a fighter, mm-hmm. their ego... Bang drops. Right. It's all gone. Yeah. Because, yeah, they, they experience someone that's better than them. Yeah. And then they understand, I'm not the best thing in the world. Yeah. Well, no one is the best thing in the world, right? <laughs> I wish people would all think like that, Leonie. <laughs> if only. <laughs> is, there, is there like a culture of like going to a different gym that people will frown upon? I feel like if I went to another gym right now and um, that gym wasn't like associated with full force, I would get a lot of hate for it. Yeah. 
So it's like a, this is my tribe kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Quite literally. Okay. I yeah. think it's like that with um, BJJ. Yeah. Because there's Gracie, Bara, and then there's... Mm, there's Alpha? Yeah. Like, it's oh, pretty, yeah, pretty full on culty. Mm. <laughs> I, I think there's almost something like that in rock climbing too. A little bit. Um, I see it because you obviously have like your nine degrees bouldering gyms with lots of like cool hipsters. Cool hipsters. <laughs> yeah, that's what I like to call it. And then you have like your more traditional gyms. I, mean, I don't know the cultures that much, but for me, it's like, I just enjoy rock climbing. I don't really Do care you like joint societies? So? Um, no, not really. So it's just you and Big Brother that go together? Yeah. Or nowadays, Big Brother ditched me. Oh. <gasps> So, <laughs> I mean, I have like friends that I've met through rock climbing and I mm. think that's the good thing about sports as well. You kind of like you meet, meet people, people yeah. you meet. who are kind of like like-minded and mm. enjoy the same things you do. And it's a good way to make friends. <laughs> David's my friend now. <laughs> friends. He, forced. For, forced friends. No, nah, nah, we're, we're friends. Him. We're friends. No, we're not. It was not forced. Uh, I had a choice. Yeah, don't be my friend. I'll punch you. <laughs> Yeah, Leonie had a knife at the gym. She's like, David, be my friend. you better be on this podcast. Or I'm gonna, I know where you live. <laughs> and I was like, oh. um, but yeah, I think if you genuinely enjoy, you know, the sport that you're doing, that also helps you to like motivates mm. you as well. Yeah, exactly. What else do you do for fun? Yeah. Aside from training and kicking people's bum. That's a good one. I'm a pretty boring person if you ask me. Are you? Yeah, I've, I've been called boring quite a lot because really? I don't do much. Because I don't drink. Because I'm so, at that age where everyone drinks. Mm -hmm. So like everyone's like, oh, David, let's go clubbing, drinking. And I'm like, yeah. um. Well, this is the thing. I was like, I was like, oh, you're from that part of Sydney yeah. where that thing is pro like pretty, like how do you kind of avoid falling into that crowd? And but like... I feel like that's, that's the downfall to me. That's how I lose a lot of people. Right. So like, yeah, I've lost quite a few people like that I was close to because, because, of, because nah. of my social life. Nah, you didn't lose them. They lost you. That's true. I thought I, like I'm a firm believer like to surround yourself with people who kind of match your values in yeah. life. So mm. <laughs> <We> got... <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm more of like an outdoors person. I'm not. I'm not like a let's go drinking inside, mm. partying or that. I'm more like hiking, going out to new places. Yeah. I'm that kind of person. Nice. Yeah. I have a feeling David might get addicted to rock climbing. I think so too. I think I would. I think you would be. Like, when you when you mentioned rock climbing to me for the first time, I was like, I was supposed to try this ages ago. I just never did. Okay, you should come with me next time I go rock yeah, yeah, climbing. Yeah, yeah, I'm down. I'm okay. full down. Okay. It's very addictive. Like, I really enjoy martial arts, but there's a pain threshold <laughs> that yeah, I just yeah. can't go through, especially at my age. That's one of the reasons I chose rock climbing because it, I can do it at my own pace, but it, it's still quite extremely challenging. Kickboxing, I think there'll be a lot of joint pain. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, trust me. I. It's funny because I have like, I have a lot of ankle pains now and hip pains Ooh. from doing it. And then um, every time I go to where I work, mm -hmm. they're like, David, you're only 21. How do you have so much pain? How This is impossible. And I'm like, ah. Oh. Yeah, because I was actually gonna think about doing BJJ before rock climbing, but mm. then, but then I, you know, I, I yeah, you'll you'll kill yourself. <laughs> no, absolutely, because I I'm like, oh, <laughs> I still want to keep my knees and my joints. <laughs> yeah, or like my hip, like when I move it, it clicks all the time oh. now. Yeah, my hip clicks too. Yeah, and then it's funny because I make Leonie do all the stuff I do at training. Oh my god! And then she's like, oh, David, my hips. So I'm like, oh, it's normal. <laughs> <laughs> and then by the end of the session, I'm just like sitting there defeated. And you're like, what's wrong? I'm like, I'm like oh, Leonie, are you right? And she's like, yeah, I'm all right. My soul's just left my and body. I'm like, that's okay. It'll come back eventually. <laughs> Give it like 10 minutes. Well, yeah. No, it's been fun. I really enjoy boxing because it's also kind of like stress relief. Yeah, I feel like I can release so much from that. Yeah. No, well, what motivates fine. you though? Uh, I feel like there's always a way to get better. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm always looking for a way to improve myself personally. Mm. But like, even though there were times where... I feel like I'm at the same spot. It's just trying to find a way to improve myself. Because mm. it's always, there's always a way. What is your life motto? Oh, okay. This one doesn't even really relate to, um, like, training. Mm. But I, I usually think to myself, um, everything you do in life or, like, the decisions you make, they all happen for a specific reason. Mm. And then um, one of the quotes I have, I'm going to try to memorize this. <laughs> okay. It's from Daniel Cormier. He's a UFC fighter. He said, um, 
no matter how bad things turn out, uh, eventually the sun is going to rise, mm. which I find that, like, you can take that in many ways. But personally, I take that in a really good way. Yeah. Where no matter how bad things get, like, even with training or, like, in life, there's always a positive that will come out of it. Mm-hmm. That's how I see life, yeah. That's very deep, very philosophical. So who's your favourite fighter then? Who's my favourite fighter? Oh, I have too many. <laughs> <laughs> I have too many fighters, you know. The one that got me into UFC uh, would be Anthony Pettis, who lost yesterday. Tears. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you know who that is, Big Brother? Of course Yes. Do. Yeah. Who's Big Brother's favourite fighter? Yeah, who is Big Brother's favourite fighter? Um, if I have to remember, like, who I admire the most was Anderson Silva. Oh, yeah. Because that, that was sort of when I got into UFC and started mm. watching it. What is one thing you are grateful for today? I like to end <clears throat> my podcast with huh. my gratitude. I would say probably the, the workplace I have right now. Because, mm. yeah, finding a gym that would accept you mm. as a personal trainer, is, I found really hard. People are very judgmental mm. in the personal training industry. Mm. But I feel like BYB, they care about more your experiences rather than how you look. Right. So they, they're being very accepting, honestly. Yeah. I, it doesn't feel like a boss-employee thing. Yeah. It feels like more of a family. Yeah. Like a... Which is what you want. Yeah, which, which is really good. That's what I really like. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because I've been to, like, gyms where it's just been, like... It doesn't feel very... Like, you're not part of the community. Yeah. But then I come to, like, BYB, and it's like, oh, everyone knows each other. Everyone's so Yeah, friendly. everyone's... Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which, is, which makes the experience a lot mm. more. Like, you want to go back. What am I great... Grateful for. Yeah, what are you grateful for? Uh, I'm grateful that I have an abled body so that I can actually do sports that I like today. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you very much, David. No, thank you for, for having me, honestly. Lounge. Yeah, why did you agree to come on my podcast? What did you think when I asked you? I was, I was just like, oh, that's, that's nice. It's pretty random, but I haven't been on a podcast before. Um, but I'm down for anything, honestly. Yeah, well, that's also a good life yeah. motto to have. Mm. Just be down for anything. Down Except for, anything. for drugs. Except for drugs. And alcohol. And alcohol. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> Maybe one time. You, you only life. live your life once. If you go to Maybe to one 10, time. It must. just depends if you let it control you or not, I guess. That's like, what I... Comes. Yeah, I want to be in control. Yeah. I can't... I don't know what I would be like if I wasn't and in then, control. Yeah, some people get addicted to that. And then their life just spirals. Yeah, exactly why so. I, I try to avoid it. Because you never know. <laughs> never know what's going to happen. Yeah. I'll try it once, but don't know when. Stay away from we drugs. We don't advocate. We don't, yeah, we, no drugs. Stay away from drugs, kids. No drugs. <laughs> okay, let's go uh, do some kickboxing. Yes. And I'll insert go. the clips. All right. Bye, everyone. See Catch you in the next episode.